I'll give an overview of the Not On My Bus campaign, which we launched in 2018. So it's actually a local adaptation of a global campaign from Oxfam International. Um, when before we launched this campaign, Not On My Bus, a lot of kind of thought went to it. There was a process behind it. First, we did some ground level check-in, ground level research to find out what we really need to address. Because uh, the global campaign I just referred to earlier, that was to address um, violence against women and girls. So in Sri Lanka also we were taking what exactly do we need to focus on. So then after we did a, a normative research, you know, some study on social norms, we decided, you know what, let's focus on sexual harassment. The way we fine-tuned our messages, the way we fine-tuned even our hashtags, the very focus of the campaign, that was done through a collective process. We had partner organizations and it was something we created collectively. So initially when we got all our partners involved, we wanted to make sure that there's diversity in our strengths, in our focus areas. True organizations we focused on women's rights, but then they were working in different sectors. So we had ground level organizations which work with free trade zone workers, then we had organizations with work primarily at policy influencing level. So it was a diverse group of partners that we got on board to design this campaign. The campaign primarily we focused on creating change at individual levels. We did not go to a level of policy influencing. From the start of the campaign we were very keen, we want to make this different. We want to ensure a wider reach for the messages of the campaign kind of go far and wide. One thing we really emphasized on making the campaign creative uh, from our images, from our hashtags, from the messages. So a lot of energy went into it. A lot of time was expended to it and it was definitely worth it. All campaign material was trilingual. Everything was developed in English, Sinhala and Tamil. The Facebook posts we created, the Instagram posts we created, we made sure that they were very creative. It was something new. The artwork was something new. Not to criticize anyone, the conventional method of developing campaign material concerning violence against women is putting a hand saying Kanta Hinsane Pitu Dakimu but no that is not what we wanted. We wanted to create a culture of people intervening. Reinforce a new social norm. Sexual harassment in public transport is not something that should be tolerated and you as a bystander, it goes down to the individual level, can intervene and um, create like a positive social change. Campaigns we see, uh, messages, we constantly hear media flooding us to do this, do that. But what we really wanted to narrow it down and say, how do we intervene? You say bystanders must intervene. But you know, when you are traveling in public transport, you also get nervous. Like, how do I intervene? What exactly do I say? So in the campaign, we kind of narrowed it down to that level. You know, these are the specific ways you can intervene. These are the specific things you can say. They were very simple nothing complicated nothing you had to memorize so i think that also helped to kind of this campaign to move forward to reach to a wider mass of people what the bystanders were expected to do was very simple so we wanted to keep all our campaign messages very simple and we started with the bystander action steps on how you can be a better bystander and we wanted to create a culture on you know how it's it's something cool and we wanted it to be relatable to all age groups all ethnicities we kind of made sure we reflect that in our artworks in our steps of intervening there are um, old people intervening there are young people intervening and also we made sure not to portray women as weak feeble incompetent individuals Talking about the campaign, we made sure to use a lot of social media, especially Facebook and Instagram. It's great to have a good concept for a campaign. It's even greater to have really creative messages developed around it. For example, the campaign slogans, the campaign messages and hashtags were very localized, like Sadhyak Dan, create a scene. Something a person would completely feel comfortable saying, right? One thing we really learned during the, as the campaign progressed was that the fact that we invested um, in having really good Facebook posts, design aspect of it really helped these posts to move forward. And when we were looking at the analytics of it, one thing that we saw was that there was a higher level of male engagement in this social media campaign, which we thought was kind of a good indicator 
because for a campaign which focuses on addressing sexual harassment in public transport faced by women having the fact that there was a higher involvement of men contributing to creating a public discourse around this issue that was fantastic i think again i'm going to reiterate to really invest your time and resources in making your campaign material creative and make sure that people can relate to it i think that's the most important thing make your messages very crisp make it very catchy because there's no point us giving a call to action if people feel uncomfortable or people feel disconnected relate to the campaign or kind of take your message forward another thing we learned from our research is that when you see one bystander intervening that person gets support from people around so it's like there's a ripple effect we wanted to kind of reinforce these messages through our campaign and uh, social media it's freely available using these tools definitely helped us move it forward and to be honest believe it or not we've only paid and boosted one post everything else move forward organically don't always think uh, we have to pay and boost these posts to make it more shareable to get more likes i'm not undermining the importance of boosting so that's where it comes down to again to make sure that your messages are very crisp creative and relatable